Hello, everyone. I'm Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. This week, I have the final installment of my special Faces of Farming series, a series of conversations with some of the people who have made it their life's work to feed the rest of us. This week, I'm talking to Brian Walbrink, who grows almonds in California. Almonds are the most popular nut in America. Americans consume an average of two pounds of almonds per person every year. And although all nuts are nutritious, almonds are particularly good sources of fiber, vitamin E, calcium, and monounsaturated fats. Now, the health benefits of almonds have been well-documented in clinical trials. Frequent almond consumption has been shown to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, help control blood sugar, and support weight loss. And the most effective way to deploy them is as an alternative to other less nutritious snacks. A recent study found that replacing between meal snacks with almonds improved the overall quality of the diet, reduced empty calories, and increased total nutrient intake. And just a few years ago, almond lovers got another piece of great news. It turns out that they're about 25% lower in calories than we previously thought. For decades, we believed that an ounce of almonds contained about 170 calories, but more accurate methods have revealed that an ounce, which is just a small handful of almonds, contains just 130 calories. Over the past several weeks, I've been talking to professional farmers about their lives and their work. We've heard from people who grow fruits and vegetables, run dairy farms, and raise cattle. And some of what you've heard may have changed your mental picture of farms or cattle ranches. But do you even have a mental picture of an almond grove? Although North America is now the world's largest producer of almonds, most of us have never seen an almond tree in bloom or heavy with nuts. Welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us what's going on in the almond groves right now. What's your day today going to look like after we finish taping this interview? Well, today uh, we're, we're coming off a, a very strong and busy harvest, uh, which really dominates most of August and September. Now we're really uh, doing the things, getting the trees ready to go to sleep, as we call it, or enter the dormancy period on the almond life cycle. So we're doing things like hedging, pruning. Uh, we're still irrigating as we wait for rain in California. We're feeding the trees and composting, and we're also planting cover crops, uh, getting ready for bloom 2019. Something tells me that even though the trees are dormant, the almond growers are busy year-round. Yes. Yeah, it, it definitely is a 12-month-a-year uh, profession, uh, but uh, it, it's ever-changing, always exciting, and we're always trying to stay ahead in the fields. So do you only harvest one time per year? Correct. Uh, the California almond harvest typically lasts uh, from August uh, through September. Uh, we had a little bit later year this year due to some colder temperatures early on in the season, and some growers are just wrapping up uh, as far as the first week of November. Well, as I mentioned earlier, most of us could pick an almond out of a lineup of nuts, but most of us would not know an almond tree if we ran right into it. And maybe that was part of what motivated you a couple of years ago to start an Instagram feed. Tell There's not a lot of farmers with Instagram feeds. <laughs> so tell us about the 44 Days of Harvest project that you did. Sure thing. I've, I've actually gone through three seasons now uh, documenting the, the day-by-day occurrences on the ranch. And uh, it was really something that started as a conversation three years ago. People were asking me on a daily basis what was going on from the field. And I said, well, how about I just start posting and show you guys? Uh, so I, I grabbed my phone, went into the field, and really tried to document what we're doing uh, that day and, and trying to give a, uh, you know, the outsiders an inside look at uh, how we're farming, what we're doing, and what the harvest really looks like. What a great idea. And uh, I have a link to your Instagram feed in the show notes for the listeners if they want to check that out. But you were sort of ahead of our idea here. That is exactly what we're trying to do in the Faces of Farming series is give people who are sort of outside the world of agriculture, but of course, completely dependent upon it, a little view into what goes on there. Social media has been a really big help uh, visually uh, to our industry in the last couple of years. And the use of Instagram and Facebook has really opened up conversations that I was not having before. 
Brian, all of the farmers that I've talked to so far in this series either grew up in farming families or in farming communities, but you are actually a city boy. What got you into farming? <laughs> exactly right, Monica. Uh, I am an official transplant. I, uh, I, I had the luxury of marrying in uh, to a wonderful family business. And uh, I grew up in Southern California, Orange County. I, I still am a surfer, uh, but everybody thought I was going to be a real estate broker or a stock broker. I ended up in a almond orchard, uh, the, the ranch that uh, I get to be a part of now with my family. Uh, it's a fifth generation farm. And we've been growing almonds for uh, over 40 years. As I'm sure you know, almonds have a great reputation for being healthy, thanks to a lot of research that's been done on the health benefits of frequent almond consumption. And I reviewed some of that research at the beginning of the podcast. But I have to ask you this too. They also have a reputation for being water hogs. There was one widely cited report that claims that it takes a gallon of water to produce a single almond and that almonds consume a disproportional share of dwindling water supplies. Brian, is that a fair charge? Has, have almonds been unfairly singled out here? Well, I think they have. I mean, I think most people don't understand uh, how much water agricultural in general takes. Uh, but I think the positive nature is it's really opened up conversation to how we're doing things, uh, what our resources are. And when we're able to engage in the conversation as we have been uh, since that was published a couple of years back, uh, it's really been a positive mix. People have been very happy with uh, what California almond growers are doing with the resources that we're given. We have 70% of almond growers using micro-irrigation in the fields now. And we've really cut water uh, by incredible amounts over the last uh, you know, 10 to 20 years. And we really are doing more with less. So micro-irrigation is one way that you've reduced water use in the fields. Uh, any other innovations that are helping improve the sustainability of this crop? You know, we're really just trying to, I mean, from the water perspective, we're really trying to uh, just track our usage and using technology uh, to make sure we need to irrigate and to uh, make sure that the soil is ready for an irrigation. So we've really tried to use modern technology blended into the ranch uh, as well. But we, the other thing that I mentioned earlier uh, in the interview was uh, using cover crops. And these are planting crops in the middle of the row, and it is to improve bee health during bloom time. And uh, we're very proud of that uh, from the field level, and we're really trying to create a ranch that's going to be around in the next 50 years. I'm glad you mentioned technology. One of the most interesting things to me about speaking with farmers is that modern agriculture has this juxtaposition of technology and innovation with all of that work that can still only be done by human hands. What's the balance of machine labor and human labor in the almond growing business? Are you able to harvest most of the nuts mechanically or are there some aspects of almond care that are still done by hand? You know, there, there's the farm labor and hand labor is still a huge component. Uh, it, it, it takes our workers uh, to drive the tractor, tractors through the field, to drive the harvesters, all of the equipment, uh, the harvest itself is uh, fully mechanized, uh, starting with a shaker, which looks like a machine uh, from the Star Wars era. Um, uh, then it goes into sweeping and then to harvesting. So those are three separate machines uh, that cover a lot of ground, but still, uh, obviously, there's a huge reliance on labor uh, during the harvest period. During the rest of the year, we still have guys mowing, driving tractors through uh, as we're, we're putting on different field applications. And then, of course, uh, daily and weekly checking of water uh, visually. You mentioned that at this time of year, you're also pruning the, the trees to get them ready for the next harvest. Is that something that is still done by hand? You know, that, that actually, uh, in the last couple of years, we have uh, mechanized that as well. Uh, it is a single tractor with uh, some rotating giant saw blades that drives through the field and uh, hedges the trees back. And what we're trying to do is open up the tree rows to promote sunlight to get down to the orchard floor uh, to help growth uh, on the tree throughout the season. Wow, that must be an amazing machine. I'm sure that's uh, documented in your Instagram feed for people that want to actually see what those those tractors and those machines look like. Yes, I'll be documenting that piece uh, in the next couple of weeks as we're kind of getting into the off-season posting. Perfect, perfect timing. 
So Brian, you're a pretty young guy. Can you see yourself doing this for your entire career? Absolutely. I absolutely love the industry. I love the daily challenges uh, of being an grower, And I also really enjoy the people. I've, I've had the good fortune to get involved uh, with the California Almond Board about 10 years ago. And the, uh, it's a very diverse group of people in California. Uh, and most of the growers uh, have very interesting stories. When you actually get a chance to get off the field and sit down and have a cup of coffee with them. Uh, there's very interesting stories and very good families running these uh, orchards out here. In fact, they're, the almond industry is 90% family owned and there's over 6,000 growers in California. So where do you see this industry headed in the future? What, what do you see as maybe the greatest challenges or maybe the greatest opportunities that are facing agriculture in general now that you're in this business? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the number one focus right now is obviously water and our resources. And we're trying to be good stewards, uh, kind of ahead of policy and le- legislation in the state. Uh, when you have an industry that's so concentrated, like the California almond industry, uh, we grow 80% of the world's almonds. So the, the world is very reliant, uh, on California getting this supply into the world. And you uh, were looking at increasing crops. Uh, which is uh, you know, always going to put some leverage on global trade. But I'm very confident that we're going to be climbing very soon uh, from 2.45 billion, which was about this harvest, uh, to 3 billion pounds within the next five years. That's a lot of almonds. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. It, there's a lot of mouths to feed out there. Brian, I want to thank you so much for spending some time at this busy time of year and giving us a peek into your world. Monica, thank you for your time and spending your day featuring California almonds. It's been my pleasure. And for listeners to learn more about the health benefits of almonds or the ongoing sustainability efforts, the Almond Board of California has put together a ton of great resources on their website at almonds.com. And to see what's going on in the almond groves this week, you got to check out Brian's Instagram feed. I have a link to that from our show notes. If you missed the earlier installments of the Faces of Farming series, they are all available on our website at quickanddirtytips.com or on your favorite podcast platform. You'll find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, and you'll find me at nutritionovereasy.com or on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Nutrition Diva. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week. 